So this is review of writing equations for line using y equals mx plus b. Um, this video is supposed to go after the other two videos. So we have review of initial value and we have review of slope and rate of change. So hopefully you, or if you haven't watched those and some of this doesn't make sense, you might want to go back and watch those videos. Um, this video is assuming that you remember how to find slope and you know how to find the y-intercept, then we're just gonna write the equation. Um, I will go over it just a little bit on how to find these two, but there are longer, more in-depth videos over finding just slope and finding just y-intercept in the previous notes, okay? So remember, y equals mx plus b. The m is always the slope. I think about it as like a mountain. You think about a mountain and you're hitting the slopes, like you're skiing on the slopes. And then the B is the y-intercept. Um, so that's always the part that you add or subtract at the end. The slope is always with x. So you can always tell which one is the slope because it's always with the x. And you can always tell which one's the y-intercept because it's always adding or subtracting at the end. So these ones, once you know what the slope is, so remember M is slope, the B is the y-intercept, and I just use y, int for y-intercept. So this is the B, this is the M. So in your equation, you're just gonna write the four where the letter M is, and you're gonna write the two where the letter B is. So let's do that. So you always have y equals and then the slope for this problem is 4, so it'd be 4. We always have x. The slope is always with x. And then plus, plus whatever your b is. And in this case, it is 2. So that would be our equation. So the hardest part about equations is finding the slope and the y-intercept. Um, this one, it already gave you the slope and the y-intercept. You just have to plug it into the equation. So let's do the next one. Um, okay, so then this one, let's say y equals. And then remember the m is our slope. The b is our y-intercept. So it would be y equals... Notice this one's a one-half. It's the same thing. You just have to write it as a fraction. If you were having to type it in the computer, remember do one slash, which is the question mark, two, and then x, and then you would do plus a negative five. Now, we don't actually leave it as plus a negative five. Remember, adding a negative number, or if the bank was giving you a negative amount of money, that means that they were taking money away. So plus a negative is the same as minus five, or subtracting five. So don't forget that part. So if you have a multiple choice test, and the only option is a minus five, it's the same thing as adding a negative. Math people are lazy and they don't like writing the extra stuff. Okay, so the video cut out. Hopefully it didn't stop for too long. But so let's do these next ones. So then we have slope equals negative one half, y-intercept equals zero. So sometimes they will give it to you or you'll have it as m and b. Um, and then sometimes you have to think of the letter. So slope Remember, it's M hitting the slopes of a um, mountain. It's a mountain. Think about the letter M. So the slope would be negative one half. The y-intercept would be zero or B. So then let's write our equation. So it would be, again, y equals M is negative one half. So the only difference between those two is one's negative, one's positive. 
That just means write a negative in front of the number. It doesn't change it like the plus a minus or anything like that. So it's just negative one half x. And then you would put plus, sorry, I'm keep changing colors, plus zero. Now, if you have anything and you're starting at zero, you're not starting any further ahead. You're not um, adding anything on after you multiply here. So really, you don't have to include that part. So y equals negative one half x plus zero. Um, we're not gonna write the plus zero, so that would be our final equation. So if you see an equation like this and it asks you for the y-intercept, you would just know that the y-intercept on this one is zero because there's nothing adding at the end because the number with x is always the slope. Okay, now look at this next one. There is a part on this next one that's trying to trick you. So the y-intercept is actually negative two and the slope is negative three. So they switched the order on us. So the slope is negative three, so that's the m. And then the y-intercept is that first number, so that would be our b. So it'd actually be y equals, the negative three would come with the x, so negative three x. And then same thing as before, plus a negative two, or just subtract the two and that would be our equation. Okay, next example. This is what I was talking about where I'm going to kind of remind you. So sometimes you have to find them. It doesn't just give you the slope and the y-intercept, but hopefully you remember how to find the y-intercept and the slope from those notes. So I always think it's easier to find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept on this problem is where it crosses the y-axis. My green highlighter is going out. But it's where it crosses the y-axis. So in this case, there's no scale, so we know it's by one, so it'd be one, two. So our y-intercept equals two. Now let's find our slope. So I'm gonna go over here just so that, cause there's not enough room right there. So I'm gonna go from left to right. So from this point to this point, it goes down one, because remember each of these is one value, and then it's going over two. So the change in y over change in x, change in y over change of x would be negative one over two, which is just negative one half. So the slope equals negative one half. So just like now it turns into these problems back here, where it already gave you the slope, gave you the y-intercept. Well, you've already found the slope and found the y-intercept, so you're just gonna write your equation. So you do y equals negative one-half, because that's the slope and that's what has to go with x. And then it would just be plus what we found, which was two, so plus two. Okay, and that would be it. That would be your answer. Once you find the slope by going down one over two, down one over two, down one over two, and remember it is negative. I like drawing my little slope dude, my skateboarder slope dude. And he moves from left to right, and so he would be going down. So it's nice, negative. All right, the next one. Equation from a table. So in this case, you have to remember that the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So y-intercept when x equals zero. So there is nowhere that y x equals zero, so we're gonna have to continue the pattern. So let's find the pattern first. So five to six, that changes by one. Six to seven, that changes by one. Seven to eight, that changes by one. They're going up each time. From two to four, that goes up by two. 4 to 6 goes up by 2, 6 to 8 goes up by 2. Sorry, that's a funny, I changed my way my 2's are, but that's okay. 
Okay, so if we want to go backwards to get to zero, zero would be right before that, because notice each time they're going up by two. So if I go backwards by two, then I would need to go backwards by one. So if it's blank five, six, seven, eight, the number before five would be four. So then I'm just going to highlight that. So our y-intercept would be four. So our b would equal four. Our slope, remember it's change of y over change of x, or y's over run is how I say it. So it would be one half, which is just one half. And that would be our m. So our equation would be y equals one half x plus four. So that would be our equation. Take the b value, add it at the end, or subtract if it was negative. Take your slope and place it with x. And that is your review of writing equations for lines using y equals mx plus b.